respond to things. I like to answer a question from the different angle. And the importance for people who are older to participate and embody what the, uh, what the work is about. Because those people are the ones that can make change right now. Those are the ones that maybe a 17 year old can't vote, but a 50 something person can, right? And, and in turn, if you can embody that, you can express that to the next person that's your peer. So that, on the other side of things, is the importance because it has to be like water. It has to flow. It has to be infectious in order to really bring about human rights for everyone. And I think, oh, sorry, um, I, I know I told the group this yesterday, but for, for me as a teacher and as a mother and a, a, a woman in, in my community, in my neighborhood, the Declaration of Human Rights, it just hit me that like it needs to start with me, with my people. I was fortunate enough to bring my people, two of my people here with me today, but um, for them, to them that they, you know, we were talking at the dinner table and they were, well, what human rights, you know, well, what rights, instead of rules, what rights do we have at, at our home? And, and let's tell the neighbor kids about their rights at our home. And, and maybe we should have rights on our street. And, and I was talking about, well, if we just were able to stop and kind of reboot and start over, how much stronger and more integrated our schools would be in our communities and our homes if, if we could follow this declaration and, and be true to it. about um, the ripple effect that we have, you know, 24 people here, but we're from all over the Bay Area, and that's our community, and we just ripple the water there and spread the word. And um, as adults, we, we model a lot of stuff. We model everything that we expect our young people to do around us. It's just saying to do it isn't enough, but when they see us participate, when we share our stories and experiences with them, that's going to be really motivating to them to have something like the EHR, which is secular, it's not religious, um, it, it's, it's something that we can all look up to. And, and young people especially, we give them a moral, ethical compass about how to look at the world and how to actually identify when they feel something's wrong, that they have the words to describe why they know it's wrong. Um, it's 
our obligation to keep sharing the things that we know with everybody. And, um, and that doesn't end. So I think it's really important for us all to be together doing this. I'll share something that aside and parallel to this. I'm working with the, the, at, at the invitation of the city of Richmond, who is uh, my side of the table there, um, okay. with 36 graders in four schools in Richmond doing similar things to what you're doing. And they're using it there because they want to have a tool in the EHR to use it, a tool to fight for me. I think it may be time for us to leave this beautiful day. Wait, did you have a no, 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 no. heart to read the view? This is more just theater and <laughs> inspiration <laughs> of everybody's presentations. I, I can't say enough about what it means to just see what you did to bring your ideas forward and share your originality and, and thoughtful, um, just the, the way you pulled together your stories and collaborate with each other to present such touching and inspiring pieces. So I want to thank you for your hard work. We are going to continue a little more to work and be brief and see how this uses, but I also want to thank the audience for being here. Thank you. We have some lunch down the hall. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs>